about a year ago I saw a video on YouTube it was about the evolution of diodes and how they've gotten smaller over the years but what particularly interested me was the very first diode that was shown looked like a light globe it's actually a gas filled diode I have never seen one of those before anyway fast forward about 12 months later went to my local swap meet and there was a battery charger with one of those diodes in there and that's what this video is all about anyway to start the video off we'll give you a bit of a tour around and see what it looks like this is the coarse tap and this one here is a rear stat this is the fine adjustment when you load up the battery now we'll have a look inside and show you the various parts there's the transformer 240 volt input there is the diode itself output to the amp meter that produces negative and here are the various lines coming off taps with a coarse tap for the top now I'll pull out the diode and we'll have a closer look at it there's the diode that's the output there is the input that operates the filament and heats up and when I bought this battery charger he said it wasn't working so I'll show you how I got it going I have never worked on one of these before so I've had to use a bit of detective work and some electrical knowledge to try and figure out why it's not working and the first step I took was to measure resistance across the filament filament's still okay but I wasn't sure whether there was a vacuum left in the bulb itself so I'll show you what to look for this is a bulb from a slide projector as you can see it's gone all milky and cloudy inside and the reason for that is it's lost its vacuum and when you power the globe up it will start to burn up inside this bulb hasn't done it or this diode hasn't done it so I re-screwed the bulb back into the socket and then it went on briefly and then went off so I thought yes there must be some bad contacts so I filed all the contacts and cleaned everything up and it's been working ever since here is a close-up of the filament a bit of rough explanation as that filament heats up it emits electrons and it goes across to the other filament on the other side and once it passes through it cannot return back again so it becomes a diode here is a view of the output leads that go to the battery the previous owner cut them off so I've had to put some temporary leads and there's the battery here is a view of the amp meter the gas diode has been reinstalled time to switch it on oh there we go that's what a gas diode looks like for all intents and purposes it's just a light globe but it has three connections and that shows it working there I'll connect up the battery lead
And there you can see it's about just under two amps. Now turn the coarse tap over. As you can see it's very coarse. And then we'll use the fine rheostat. As you can see, it gives a very fine adjustment. Now we'll test the battery voltage. Fourteen point two three volts. So it's working. Another good video I have seen and watched on YouTube is a battery charger very similar to this one and what he went on to explain that batteries in those days were not just 12 volt they could be any voltage and that goes a long way to explaining why there are so many taps on the transformer so to demonstrate that I'm going to use a 24 volt battery but yes you heard right a 24 volt battery I've never seen one until recently so I'll switch it on the multimeter there we go 25.17 volts now we'll connect up battery charger and we'll switch it on Now we see the voltage hasn't changed, so we'll bring it up a notch. Now it's charging at 28 volts, just over. The next step, I've connected two 24 volt batteries in series, so I've got 48 volts. Now I'll switch on the meter. we've got 50.5 volts All right now I'll switch on the battery charger again and see how well it works now we've got no change we're on the bottom tap it's still 50.5 now we've gone up a few taps now the voltage goes up got a feeling that this thing will go up to a very high voltage in DC. I've connected an extra battery to bring the voltage up to 60 volts. We'll switch on the multimeter and see exactly what we've got. We got 62.7 without the charger on. So I'll connect up battery charger then power now as usual there's nothing happening on the lowest tap so we'll crank it up a little bit yeah there we got 77 volts so it's charging up as I said before, I think this will go up to at least 120 volts DC charging up batteries in series. Also, this battery charger is very old. I think it would be about 80 to 100 years old and it's still working. While I was doing my research on the gas diode, I came across another old fashioned diode that's not used anymore it's called an electrolytic diode and how it works there's two aluminium plates one there and one there and then it has a lead plate in the middle now this makes it because there's two aluminium plates it's a full wave rectifier now to use that we need a center tap transformer 
and with this center tap transformer you have two connections coming out and these two wires here each one goes to an aluminium plate and then you've got the other part, the set of tap itself and then to complete the circuit from the lead plate you have one wire coming out here and that becomes a negative so it's connected to the negative to the battery and the center tap wire is connected to the positive on the battery and you complete your circuit and you can charge up a battery with a homemade diode. The one problem with these diodes are they have a huge volt, voltage drop. With a normal diode you only have about half a volt drop but this one here can be about 10 to 15 volts and it's the same with the gas diode. Now with these diodes they do not become a diode until the AC is switched on. So I'll switch on the multimeter. There it shows the battery voltage 12.62 volts. Now I'll switch on the AC, the transformer. And there you can see it. 13 volts and rising. Here is a close-up of the diode and how it's made. There's four zip ties with the holes that hold together and you've got to put insulation washers in between the lead plate and the aluminium plates. Very simple to make. Here is a book I can thoroughly recommend. It's put out by the Australian Post Office and it's called Applied Electricity 2. And if you want to find out about vintage electronics and how to repair it, this is the book to get. Here we go to here. Diodes and rectifiers. That's where I found out the information about the gas diodes. Here is a section about gas filled diodes. I think the one I've got is filled with argon, but there's helium, there's many other gases that can be used 